somewhere out there in September. This pilot has that confidence. He knows, for example, that the airplane he's flying is going to get him where he has to go. And when he gets there and spots the target, he knows his guns are going to fire. When he pulls out of a dive, he knows his wings will still be there. He has to know these things because he can't afford to think about them. Flying and fighting at a thousand feet a second is a full-time job. This pilot has confidence. And the reason he has is very simple. He was told everything was okay, and he trusted his plane captain. He'll find that man waiting for him when he gets back. The man who, in a calm, competent way, is responsible for his life and safety, and for the care of more than half a million dollars worth of Navy airplanes. Together, the pilot and his plane captain make up a Navy team. And it takes the best efforts of both of them to produce the teamwork that's essential for the performance of a Navy job. You'll find this special kind of teamwork wherever there are Navy airplanes. Whatever type they may be, the system is still the same. One man in the cockpit, the other man on the mat, and plane captain. The pilot's job is to fly the airplane. As a plane captain, you're the man on the mat. And the airplane is your responsibility while it's on the ground. Whatever type of airplane you and your pilot are assigned to as a team, your team will be part of a squadron, an organization made up of similar teams, plus all the personnel and equipment needed for the support of each of these teams. Behind the flight line are the squadron's facilities. The maintenance and repair shops. The shop stores. The line shack fuel supplies, and ammunition. When you get right down to it, all these facilities have one basic function, providing necessary supplies and services for you, your pilot, and your airplane. Making the most of these facilities is part of your job. The airplane is your responsibility all the time it's on the ground. Taxiing is a part of the job of being responsible for an airplane. Your pilot will be looking to you for clear, concise, standard signals. And by giving them correctly, you'll keep your pilot happy, spare your airplane, and save yourself a lot of work. This is the point at which you take over. The point at which today's mission ends and tomorrow's mission begins. The biggest part of your job is in preparing for tomorrow's missions. And these preparations start now. The first step is taking the pilot's discrepancy report 
a report of any discrepancies he noticed during the flight. If they're serious, you may have to have the plane grounded. Otherwise, you'll have them corrected by takeoff time tomorrow. The airplane is your responsibility when it's on the ground, and it's on the ground most of the time. Your airplane will need more than gas and oil before it's ready for tomorrow's mission. And one of your most important responsibilities is finding out what they are. The process through which you find out is known as a pre-flight inspection. You make your pre-flight inspection according to a comprehensive checklist, which looks like this. Its purpose is to guide you through a minute, detailed inspection of an airplane that has had a tough day in the air today and must be ready for another one tomorrow. You'll make separate and complete inspections of all component parts. These landing gear parts have taken a terrific pounding and they'll take it again tomorrow. As you make your inspections, you'll initial each one on the inspection sheet. When you inspect the fuselage, the skin and ribs, and the control surfaces, You'll be looking for any defects that may have resulted from tons of airplane being whipped around in the air under combat conditions. You'll initial these inspections too. It's a step-by-step -step process in which you're looking for trouble. Any discrepancies you find will be noted in the space provided on the inspection form. Before you're finished, you'll have checked everything on the airplane. The things you check when you make your pre-flight inspection are the things you and your pilot have to know are right. And this is the only way you have of finding out. You'll know by the time you finish your inspection what has to be done to complete your preparations for tomorrow's mission. The airplane is your responsibility, but it's part of a squadron. And one of the functions of the squadron is to support you in preparing for tomorrow's missions. The focal point of squadron support is in the line shack where the maintenance chief is in charge of assigning the squadron's facilities. Right now, you need help in correcting discrepancies. The ones you discovered in your pre-flight inspection, as well as those that the pilot reported on landing. The maintenance chief will authorize whatever material and personnel you need, but getting the work done is still your responsibility. You'll draw whatever parts or materials you need from the shop store, which has everything in stock from aileron pins to Zeus buttons. You'll see that the rated specialists you need are assigned to the job, and then you'll work right along with them. You'll work with an aviation machinist's mate if the discrepancy is in the engine. If it's in the electrical system or in one of the instruments, 
you'll work with an aviation electrician's mate. Discrepancies in the structure or hydraulic system of the airplane will mean working with an aviation structural mechanic. If the problem is in the airplane's armament, you'll solve it with the help of an aviation ordnance man. If an item of electronic equipment is involved, such as the plane's radar, you'll work with an aviation electronics technician. Whatever the discrepancies may be, and whatever help you receive in correcting them, you are the one who's responsible for them. Because you're responsible for the airplane while it's on the ground. And you're the one who must sign this certificate. When the discrepancies have been corrected and you're satisfied with the condition of the airplane, signing the certificate and turning it into the line shack is notice to the squadron and your pilot that your preparations for tomorrow's mission have been completed. Tomorrow's mission has become today's. They'll be on their way in a matter of minutes. You'll find that special kind of teamwork wherever there are Navy airplanes. One man in the cockpit, the other man on the mat. Together, they're a Navy team, and it takes the best efforts of both of them to produce the teamwork that's essential for the performance of a Navy job. of job it is, and whatever type of airplane may be doing it, wherever it has to be done, it's a job that calls for guts and know-how. The kind of job that calls for confidence. Each of these pilots knows that the airplane he's flying is going to get him where he has to go. He knows that his guns will fire and his wings will stay on through any maneuver in the book. He has to know these things because he can't afford to think about them. Flying and fighting is a full-time job. I certify that on this date, I have personally inspected this airplane. All discrepancies have been corrected and the airplane is ready for flight. 